Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it now. Say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it, say it now. Hello, it's me, and Liza. <laughs> I thought maybe you just didn't see me again because I'm wearing the outfit. Oh, yeah, do you know what? Yeah. I didn't know you were there, but I, I could feel your essence. Yeah. So I thought I'd Sorry just introduce that. you should, anyway. should wash more often. Hi, happy Friday! Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the third night. The third night of a queer cabaret by Studio Three Arts. Woo! Just doing a little... Yeah, I can see. Woo! I can see what you're doing there. It's, yeah. lo it's lovely. More gorgeous that. Oh, absolutely lush, and it's getting hotter and hotter in here, which is fantastic for those of us who are wearing man-made fabrics. Yes, it's really it's, lovely. It's lovely. <laughs> Nothing like a sequin to get the uh, sweat droplets <laughs> rolling down the forehead, is there? I mean, you know, to be this close to you right now is a treat. It really is. When isn't it? <laughs> Karen Carpenter. <laughs> should we go over to the app? I think we should. Right, make sure though you get on those social medias, get your comments in, share it all, like it all, contact Andrew Lloyd Webber and tell him how great we are. Please don't. Him, actually, actually, please don't not contact him. Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Anyone but Andrew Lloyd Webber. Please, no. This is true. See, all this right. is what we need to hand over because the giddiness is getting to you. Look what you're saying. Yes, I'm all hot now. I'm, I've, all, I've gone a bit. I've gone. Right. Right. Over to the apps. Enjoy, babe. See you in a bit. nervous <laughs> quite an anxious person I got lost I had to do my eyes on the bus and then I forgot my shoes <sighs> just gonna take a little isn't it hot it's very hot isn't it I'm just gonna take a little second because um, while we've been in lockdown I've been trying to learn how to breathe so I've been doing this thing so you do one deep one in so you go <sighs> 
And then you're meant to hold it, but holding it makes me feel quite panicky, so I tend to just skip that bit. So I sort of do the deep breath in, and then a big deep breath out like that. And then it's meant to calm you down. So I'm just going to do that just for a second. Just, isn't it hot? Oh, I'm very hot. I've been doing yoga as well. I started doing yoga with Adrienne on YouTube during lockdown. But then that was making me more anxious because I realised that actually I'm not very good at any of the yoga and I'm about as flexible as a concrete post, so that hasn't really been helping. So I'm really sorry about this. I'm normally on time and I'm normally much better. Um, should we give it another go? got this scar about a centimetre up from the left corner of my lip. Took 12 stitches to stitch my lip back together. But for quite a long time, it felt like they might as well have just stitched my entire mouth up. Luckily, facial hair came into fashion, so that hides it. So you see, when the clock strikes upon the hour and the sun begins to fade, as much as I'd like to dance with somebody, what I'd really like is to feel safe. I'd love to feel the heat with somebody, but I'd rather not have to get off the district line two stops early, three stops early, four stops early, because I can feel the heat from the way that guy over there is staring at me. You can feel the anger and sometimes the confusion because it's like you don't know if he wants to punch you or fuck you. Don't you want to stare? Say you want to stare. Don't you want to stare? Stare. Don't you want to stare? Say you want to stare. Don't you want to stare? Or if they nudge their mate and it's like, I know you want to laugh. What I'd like is, what I'd like is for you all to stop buying the newspapers that talk about kids being exposed to us. 
exposed like we're dangerous, like we're something to be scared of. I'd like to see and hear your outrage when people try and paint the trans community as monsters. I love being from Barking and Dagenham. I'm proud to be from, from this place. But sometimes it gets really exhausting feeling like this place don't love me back. It's not enough to tolerate us. You see, a lot of us spent our childhoods terrified of the people that we are. Surrounded by people telling us there was something wrong with us. And so to tolerate us just isn't enough. Care for us. Love us. same way as I did I'm missing out the cracks in the pavement and tutting my heel and strutting my feet Is there anything I can do for you dear? Is there anyone I could call? No one thank you please madame I ain't lost just wondering from my hometown, memories of friends. From my hometown, ooh, the people I've made. How the wonders of my world. How the wonders of my world. How the wonders of this world. How the wonders. City when the air is so thick and opaque. I love her to see everybody in short skirts, shorts, and shades. I like it in the city when two worlds collide. You get the people and the government, everybody taking different sides. Shows that we ain't gonna stand shit Shows that we are united Shows that we ain't gonna take it Shows that we ain't gonna stand shit Shows that we are united From my hometown Memories are fresh From my hometown Ooh, the people Yeah.
my world Of my world, yeah Tiny room of invisible people, how the fuck are you doing? I'm imagining that you're all clapping a lot Usually at uh, this point in my set, I would uh, do a bit of witty audience banter just to get everyone feeling relaxed, show you that I'm owning the space. But um, you are not here, uh, so I can't actually physically compliment you. But uh, because you're invisible, I can compliment you by telling you that you're doing an excellent impression of my dad. Well done. Perfect. <laughs> Anyway, my name is John Travolver, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. It's very weird being in a physical space again. I have been in my bedroom gigging for about four months, but it's lovely to go outside. And now that we've had lockdown, stupidly, lift slightly, I've been able to do things again. I've, I've heard a lot of other comedians talking about being able to go to the hairdressers. Big whoop. It's very strange as a queer person hearing about this because queer people have been cutting their own hair in their own houses for a long time to break the fourth wall for a moment. And it is particularly thick today, the wall. You've got three options as a queer, gender, non-conforming, non-binary person when it comes to getting a haircut. You've got option number one, which is you can go to a women's hairdresser's. You can ask for the haircut that you would like, and the hairdresser will say, Why? Now, usually what I like to do at this point is to engage and to say, uh, Because I would like to have short hair, because then my ears will be cold and uh, they will fall off, and I will no longer be able to hear homophobia. And usually that elicits quite a strong response and they will shave my head so hard it's as though they are trying to gouge out the portion of my brain that questions the gender binary. And then you've got option number two, right, which is that you can get your partner to cut your hair at home. Now, this is my personal favourite. I've been practising for years. My lockdown haircut has been on point. But it's not for everyone. It's part of a very important queer mating ritual where you both shave each other's head, and then you gather up all of the hair, and you make it into a baby shape. And then you take the baby to the head of all queer people, Sandy Toxvig. And she takes the hair baby and puts it into the bake-off oven and bakes it. And that is how babies are born. Now, not everyone is ready for that step, so of course you've always got going to a male barbers. Now, my local barbers is called Man Cave. Lovely place. It's decorated, as you would assume it's decorated. It's got a lot of Jack Daniels bottles in the windows, and it's got a large taxidermied stag head on the wall. It's very inviting. I love it. My hairdresser is amazing. His name is Jack. We have beautiful feminist debates. I wasn't expecting this from him, but he really opened up to me. Last time I went in, I got an amazing insight into straight cis culture. He told me that he's really feeling pain at the moment because all of his friends are giving him a lot of jip for blow drying his beard because this is too feminine. But if he was not to blow dry his beard, it would be curly, which would be very feminine fascinating. The troubles that straight people go through. I love it. Now, because I was having these chats with Jack, I invited a few other people in the shop to also engage. And I had a guy sitting next to me turn and say, feminists would even blame men for the fact that there are men and women. Now, I don't think he was expecting me to engage, but I did. And that was really fun. Because what I didn't understand is that I love to piss people off. And so I was like, well, when you think about it, you know, you've got cis men and you've got cis women. I didn't go into intersex people because I didn't think that he was ready for it. 
you've got women with two X chromosomes, cis women, and you've got cis men with an X and a Y chromosome. And the Y chromosome is carried by sperm. So in a way, it is cis men's fault that there are cis men. And as soon as I said this, he closed his eyes and he reflected. And it was a beautiful moment. And then he exploded into a thousand tiny particles and settled in amongst all of the hair on the floor because I'd questioned his belief system so deeply that he could not handle it. And I gathered up all of the bits of him and all of the hair and I made it into a baby shape and I took it to the head of all queer people, Sandy Toxvig, and she baked it in the oven and that's how Noel Fielding was born. You're welcome. Now, it is also nice to be here just because therapy is very expensive. And so it's nice to be doing this because I can't afford therapy. Now, I grew up in Glasgow and uh, I grew up in a Catholic family. And they weren't always ready to accept me as a queer person or a comedian. But it was at least funny discussing it with them, even when I wasn't expecting the discussion. One day I was sitting and watching Emmerdale when my great aunt turned to me and said, God's not gay. This was interesting because the programme had not mentioned either gay people or the Lord. But I engaged. Ever since this moment, I've been thinking to myself, God is very gay. I never thought about it before, but once she said this, I started to reflect and I realised that he is my gay icon. I think they would even argue with the idea of being accused of being gay in quite a gay way. I'm not gay. But I do live on a cloud and I wear a robe. But I'm not gay! Stop saying I'm a gay man. I'm not. Stop it. But I did tell my son to feed 5,000 people on bruschetta and ceviche. But I'm not gay! Why would you think that? I'm not a gay man. But I did only give cis men a prostate. But not because I'm gay! I was just busy. And I forgot to give it to other people. It wasn't a selfish act. Stop it! I'm omnipotent. I can hear you thinking I'm gay. And I'm not gay. Stop that. Sarah, I may have invented your mind, and I may have made it filthy, but I don't approve of you thinking I'm gay. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's my contractor. Hello? Yeah, how's it going? Sorry, I'm getting a lot of work done on a heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, you're doing the bay, the gates? Oh, you're doing the gates? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm thinking pearly. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've got to go. I've got another call. I've got another call. It's my son. I've got to take it. I can hear it's my son. Okay, bye. Hello, baby. Mm-hmm. I might kill you next week. Is that okay? Great. Lovely. So what are we up to? We go to a party. I love parties. Not because I'm gay. Uh-huh. What are you wearing? A loincloth. It's not mixed fabric, is it? I hate mixed fabric. Mixed fabric is the worst. It's one of my main rules. I outlawed it right at the beginning of the Bible. I really care about mixed fabric. Good. Mm-hmm. And what are they serving at the party? It's a nice party. Lots of drinks. Water. Well, turn it into wine, darling. Turn it into wine. What do I give you powers for? Stupid boy. I've got to go. It's your mother. It's your mother. Your mother's calling. Your mother's calling. I've got to go. You know what she gets like. Got to go, darling. Bye, baby. Hello? No, don't hear you, alimony. We never slept together. Not because I'm gay, no. Just because I hate women. I, ha I hate women. I hate women so much. Have you read my book about how I hate women just because they're women? I hope you all suffer in childbirth. <coughs> Ever since 
ever since I've started reflecting on God as my queer icon, I've started thinking whether I could use that to justify other aspects of my life too, my Catholic family. Like, one of the ways I've done this is by arguing that he is the ultimate joker so that they will get on board with my career. Because God is a joker. I feel like God created the earth and then was just looking down at it like, wow, I've made such a delicate ecosystem there. Look at that, wow. I wonder what I should base everything's survival on. I need something really reliable to be at the bottom of the ecosystem. Something really good. Something that won't just crumble and then let everything else die. I wonder what I should do. Don't know, don't know, don't know. No. I can't. No. Who would be wrong? <laughs> okay. The bee. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I made that animal, I just wanted to have one that's only defense mechanism was to stick its ass in a problem and in doing so, kill itself. It's perfect. Wow. Oh, my God. Sorry, he says that a lot. He's very egotistical. Oh, my God. Look at that over there. <sighs> I've made such a delicate political situation. I wonder what I should base everything's survival on. Don't know, don't know, let's think. Oh no, there's cloud in the way. <laughs> you know, that's one of the main downsides to living up here. Beautiful views, but a lot of cloud. <laughs> hmm. You know, I think I'm gonna go human. No, don't make me. I'm going to make sure their only defence mechanism is to vote against their best interest. And in doing so, doom us all to an inevitable nuclear disaster and a humanitarian crisis and a widening poverty gap. Someone stop me! You can't, I'm omnipotent. Wow. Oh my God. I've made such a delicate male ego. It's so fragile, look at that. I oh know, there's more cloud. <laughs> Where it just blew away. It's so delicate. No, I mustn't. Okay then. I'm just going to leave it as it is. You're welcome. No, you might be wondering, was your childhood full of trauma around Catholicism? Yes, it was. And for years I struggled because I was told that there were no good queer Catholic role models. But those people were wrong. I want to tell you about Abbess Benedita Carlini, an absolute top lad living in 15th century Florence. Now, Abbess Benedita Carlini is very important to me. She got a wee bit bored one day of the daily duties of running her convent, and she decided that the best thing to do was to be to make a dildo out of a crucifix and then to fuck, literally, loads of nuns. What a legend. Now, the church did notice that the nuns were suddenly much happier, and Benedita got into a lot of trouble for her threateningly male behaviour. But she got away with it, and she taught everyone an important lesson. Straight people are very silly, as is their homophobia. And so when dealing with it, sometimes it's fun to be silly back at them. She told the church that it wasn't her that had fucked all the nuns. No, no. It was a male angel that had possessed her, called Splendidello. Outrageously camp and 100% true. Now, she decided she should throw them off the same further by throwing a giant wedding to God one of the least present cis men that she could marry. She paraded through the streets of Florence wearing a big white wedding dress, occasionally stopping to make out with monks on the way. Haven't we all? Now, seeing as we're all stuck in isolation right now, I want us to take a moment to just hold on to the fact that eventually we will all get to be as here and queer 
as Abbess Benedita Carlini. It'll happen. Thank you so much for having me. I've been John Travolva. See you later. It's been seven hours and 112 days Since I had a dick in my mouth I stay home every night and wank all day Since you took your dick away Since you've been gone, I can eat whenever I want I don't even bother to douche I could order dinner from a fancy restaurant But nothing, I said nothing will stop these balls being blue Nothing compares Nothing compares to you It's been so lonely without you here Like a hole without a dong Nothing can stop these lonely pop possessions But tell me COVID When can I suck cock? I would put my mouth around every dick I see But they might have the COVID flu I logged on to Grindr and guess what they told me? Guess what they told me? They said, girl, you better try to have fun no matter about the flu. But they're all fools, cause nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. the loads that you planted, Papa, in my backyard, all dried when you went away. I know that fitting you in was sometimes hard, but I'm willing to give it another try. Nothing compares, nothing compares to you. Nothing compares, nothing compares to Dick.
Oi, I'm not being funny, but these nights are absolutely cracking, aren't they? If we do say so ourselves. If we do say so <laughs> ourselves. Not that we curated them or anything it's like not, that. To be fair, it's not down to us. We're actually just big enough all the people that performed. Oh, You've all been lovely. Absolutely lush. I've yeah. really enjoyed myself. Now, it's Friday night. So what are you doing now after? Um, probably just going to be at home. Oh. It's lockdown. But in, in my imagination, yes. I'm taking this. Yeah. And I'm having a little street party. OMG. We're having a little street party. And You're it, all invited. In my imagination, I'm going to come to your street party. Great. Yeah. Well, there we go. We'll have right. a lovely time. Are you all Do you know where we're going to hang this? <laughs> you could just hold it. You've got a bit of a thing for that. Yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> well, enjoy your Friday nights. Yes, please do. And tomorrow night is the last night of the cabaret. Last night of us. So you better come back. Terribly sad. And remember, tomorrow it. night we've got the acts, but we've also got an after party. We've got an absolutely cracking DJ joining us as well. Woo, and I'll you be might there. see some more of this. Look. I'll be there doing the Macarena. Yeah, let's go. I'll be like, I Have can't a great wait. time. <laughs> Bye. Do it, 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 do it now. Say it, 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 say it